Hi, welcome to the second part for day two. Here we're going to be looking at the topic, creating community of inquiry, what the research tells us. The learning outcomes, by the end of this topic, you will be able to explain the principles in the use of community of inquiry in creating blended learning content. Develop strategies for facilitating an online course using community of inquiry framework. Now, what to know when creating community of inquiry? First, the three original presence. We stands, we have the social presence, the cognitive presence, the teaching presence. I'm going to speak more on the cognitive presence. The cognitive presence is drawn from trigger events, exploration, integration, and resolution. That when you are creating the cognitive presence, which really stands for the content, when you are facilitating a course, let that content come from the trigger events. Let it come from exploration and let it come from integration and resolution. And what does this mean? It means give opportunity to the learners to interact and relate with their environment because that is the only way they're going to find such triggers. They're going to explore, to know what is happening. And at the same time, they will now be able to get solution to it and discover a new knowledge. So that is what this part is talking about. Now, the community of inquiry framework creates opportunities for self-reflection, active cognitive processing, interaction, and peer teaching. Again, it emphasizes deep and meaningful learning, which require active activity drawn from four different but overlapping components. And what are these components? Involve triggering events, exploration, integration, and resolution. And that is what I said a few minutes ago, because the deep learning can only come when the learner is able to interact with his own environment and discover what is required to drive the environment beyond what he or she is being told. Now, let's look at the last part. The norm of the present stands alone. That is very important. No one of the present stands alone. And this was emphasized by Garrison in 2011, who reports evidence that cognitive presence requires a balance among cognitive, social, and teaching presence. So the three of them work together to be able to create a whole and come up with more meaningful impacts. Now, let us look at, again, what the community of inquiry says when it comes to facilitation. It says facilitation and guidance is key, not just explanation of content. So you need to guide. And what is the research back in this? We had the Archibald 2010, which showed evidence that teaching presence and social presence explains 69% of the variance in cognitive presence. Again, from research, teacher presence and not teacher presence. I take that again, you have teaching presence and not teacher presence. Because the community of inquiry have teaching presence and it put teacher presence. And what is he saying? He said, in both the teacher and the learner play the role of teaching function, hence the name teaching presence. So the reports of Sheer and Bijaro 2009 says that the student experience of teaching presence affects the emergence of social presence. So if you allow the student to participate in the teaching, you allow the student 
to uh, play the role of the teacher as well in the class, then it will help in bringing in the social presence, which could equally enhance the learning in the class. Now we have the Cleveland and the Capel 2012. Then they came up and says that when you look at the emotional presence, because they are the ones that came up with the emotional presence, we remember we have three other presents before. We have the cognitive, we have the teaching, and the social presence. But Clevet and Co. they now came up and said, no, apart from these three presents, there is still another presence called the emotional presence, which they define as the outward expression of emotion by individual and among individual in a community of inquiry as they interact with learning, technology, course content, students, and facilitators. What they are saying that there are some emotions that could be created while interactivity is ongoing. What type of interactivity? There are three major types of interactivity. We have learner to content, learner to learner, and learner to facilitator. So when these interactions are going on, that there are bound to be emotional presence coming up. For example, when a learner is interacting with the teacher, and the feedback he gets from the facilitator is not very good. It could affect his emotion or the kind of language that is being used. And that is why we normally advocate the way you write as a facilitator matters a lot. Now, exploratory factor analysis suggests emotional presence may stand alone as a separate element in this framework. And this was done by Clevan, Ignis, Ali, and Co. in 2013. Again, there was a further research that a further research is required to evaluate the relationship between emotional presence and other presence. And this will determine if the new element will stand alone in the framework. No, a view of how the community of acquiring works. So let's look at this particular uh, diagram here. You have the social present, the cognitive present, the uh, here we have the teaching presence, and here we have the educational presence. You see that the educational presence is bringing all together. So it's bringing the social presence, the cognitive presence, and the teaching presence. And what the community of inquiry is saying that when you bring in the cognitive, social, and the teaching present, then you will have a full educational experience which the learner will need. And here we discover that when you bring in the cognitive presence, you are engaging with the content, you are bringing in the teaching presence, you are coming up with direction, you are giving engagement with the goals and direction. And with the social presence, you are having engagement with the participants because the participants need to get engaged. Then here we'll have the setting of climate that will help their regulatory learning. And here we'll have supporting discourse. All of them need to come together if you want to have a meaningful learning. That is what the community of inquiry is telling us. Now, let's look at the guide for facilitators when using the community of inquiry in blended learning. Social, where you are dealing with social, use collaborative, um, use collaboration and team, where you want to bring in social presence. Communicate using emails, chats, forums, video conferencing, provide individual and group work support, then make use of your icebreakers. That will help to bring in social presence. And to bring in the cognitive presence, Provide learners' devices such as self assessment questions or quizzes, the use of problem solving scenario, use of questioning technique. Now, to bring in the teaching present, use of peer teaching is encouraged. Uh, then, let learners present have uh, present their learning experiences. Give them opportunity to present their learning experiences. Then, the facilitators play leadership role. Now, to take care of the emotional presence, give meaningful feedbacks. Use active words instead of passive words when giving feedbacks. Again, be positive in your statement when giving feedback. Develop ground rules to guide chat and forum discussion. 
mediate in ways that that are written in passive form in the course material. Remember, when you want to facilitate, in some instances, you are not the one that developed the course material. So what do you do? You must first and foremost work through the material, take note of some of these kind of words, passive words that may have been used, that you need to turn them around into active words. They provide support, which is key you must provide support to the learners. Now, in summary, we could say that we have worked through the basis of the use of community of inquiry, how community of inquiry was, and guide for facilitators when using community of inquiry in blended learning. So having said this, we have an assignment. The assignment says, State your experience on the use of social, cognitive, teaching, and emotional presence in teaching and learning. As you work on your assignments, I wish you good luck and look forward to meeting you in the next class. Thank you for coming.